Hello everyone and welcome back to my Lawn Bowls for Fun channel. Now you'll see I'm indoors. Yeah, the summer season's over. We don't bowl on grass in this country, in the United Kingdom, in the winter. Not only is it too cold or wet, it gets too dark in the evening to play. So all the bowlers in this country play indoors in the winter season. And it started about two weeks ago. So I'm now going to show you around my bowling club. So here we are, we're at a, a sports centre in Farnborough. It's the Farnborough Leisure Centre. And uh, my club, Rushmore Indoor Bowling Club, hire rinks here every day of the week to play various domestic league games. As you can see, it's empty at the moment. This evening, it's the one evening we don't bowl make very much here. But we do have some ladies turning up for some coaching later on. So before they turn up, I'll just show you around. So this is the bowling surface. Some people call it a carpet. Some people call it a felt. Uh, so we hire out the rinks we want to use. Um, Monday to Friday, we play mornings, afternoons and evening leagues. We play friendlies at weekends. We do coaching on Wednesdays and Saturday mornings. So if you want to learn to play bowls, come and see us here at Rushmore Indoor Bowling Club. Not only Rushmore Bowl here, of course, uh, the U3A, which is a society for retired people that want to take up new hobbies, they bowl here as well, a couple of times a week. And of course, members of the public can come and hire a rink as well, which as you can see at the moment, there's a few guys having a little roll up. You can see one of the problems we had here. When this was built back in the 70s, um, it was a state-of-the-art bowling green. But of course, what they didn't do is give us any room to get off the green at the back here. So you can see it's a little bit um, difficult if the if it's a full-length jack or the jack put in the ditch, everybody struggles to find where to stand. We do cope, it's not a big problem. But it would have been very handy to have had at least a bit of room to get off the green at the end, but we didn't. Sadly, this bowling club is about to be closed. We hope we've got a couple more years to go, but the sports centre itself is due for demolition. And the local council of Rushmore are going to build a new sports hall. But sadly, bowls is not going to be part of that. The reason is, I'm afraid, it just doesn't make enough money. And these days, as I'm sure you know, it's all about making money. So uh, we are looking, hoping, that we'll be able to still build a standalone bowling club. And we are in negotiations with the local council with that now. Whether we succeed or not remains to be seen. But we're going to be here for at least a couple of years. It's a great shame because this is a lovely bowling club. Although there's a few problems with it getting off the green at the end. Um, it is actually a really nice playing service and we have about 350 regular well, members of Rushmore Indoor Bowling Club. I think up to about 100 U3A bowl here as well. I don't know how many members of the public come in, but um, they come as well. So probably 500 people bowl here. And uh, if that goes, that'll be a great shame, but we'll just have to wait and see. So a couple of things I need to mention about indoor play. The first one is, You'll notice on the green here, there's the tee where the jack goes. If it's uh, if the jack's sent down the green and it goes between the tee mark and the ditch, it is put onto the tee. You'll also notice two other dots by the side of the tee, and they are response. So the main differences to indoor play to outdoor play. Um, first of all, the speed of the green. Um, outdoors, you get fast greens and you get slow greens. And obviously on a fast green, the bowl takes longer to slow down and therefore it will bend a lot more. On an indoor carpet, it's really fast compared to even the fastest green outdoors. So you will find the adjustment from outdoor play to indoor play um, quite difficult because the first time you bowl indoors, most of your bowls go in the ditch because it's a very gentle delivery you have to do uh, indoors to keep the bowl on the bowling green. Whereas, of course, outdoors, as I'm sure you know, especially if it's been raining, 
you've really got to put a lot of effort to get that bulb and the green. Indoors, it's the opposite. You really have to be very slow in your delivery. Don't send the bulb down at great speed, uh, otherwise it will go into the ditch. You've also got to allow a considerable more amount of bias on the bowl. And I'll demonstrate with two bowls now. The first bowl, in fact, is a very wide bowl with a wide bias. And uh, the second bowl is, is a, a bowl that takes a more narrow line. So here's the result of my two bowls. The first bowl I used was the lignoid, and as you can see, it's ended up probably about 18 inches, 20 inches to the right of the centre of the line. Although I actually sent that bowl on to the next green, so I obviously didn't take enough green. Now my other bowl, the blue bowl, I was well inside on our own green. I didn't take anywhere near as much green as I did with the link noise and it ended up right on the jack. So you can see the difference. The link noise went wider and it still wasn't wide enough, which proves that a wide uh, a set of bowls that take a wide line are not that easy to use indoors, not to be recommended really. The narrow bowls though ended up right on the jack taking far less green than lignoids. And here are a couple of other examples of how much the bowls do bend indoors compared to outdoors. Just to give you an idea what the sort of uh, bias can do to a bowl. Here's another one. See how much they swing around. There are some rule changes also um, indoors because most domestic uh, games that take place in the indoor season are of two hours length. Um, because we're part of a sports centre, we have to hire the rinks by the hour. So the, the games are two hours long. So in order to allow for that, um, there's a few rule changes to just keep the game moving so that you don't sort of slow up. One of the things that happens is that uh, we don't have any dead ends. If the jack should go out either side of the rink, that's when um, we normally you would outdoors you would replay the end. But indoors there are various rules, but the one that we use here is we have the respots. Now the respot is where the jack is put back onto the green, depending on where it went off in the first place. So if, for example, it goes off the right-hand part of the green here, then it will go on the re-spot to the right of the jack, the direction that you're bowling, the same side that the bowl went off. And obviously if it went off on the left-hand part of the green, the jack will go on the re-spot on the left-hand hand of the green. Another one of the rules is um, when you place the mat onto the uh, surface and bowl your jack down the green. If it's an illegal jack, uh, outdoors it's replayed by the opposite side. But indoors, to save time, it isn't replayed, it's just placed by the opposing team. You move the mat to the new position that you want it to be, and then the person down the other end will place the jack wherever he wants. So um, if you're playing on a long jack, for example, of team A, and then they're doing quite well. Team B will obviously either put a minimum jack up or take the mat right the way up the green and have a minimum jack as well. And they can place that, unlike outdoors, where they have to actually try and play it. You'll notice also 
on the surface there's all these little dots and that's simply to speed things up so when the jack is sent down the green the person down at the other end you don't have to wait for the, the normal signals that you would have to to do to get the, the jack in the right place you just place it to the nearest point where the jack ended up on that central line near those dots so again it it saves time Another indoor rule is you cannot visit the head in two hour games. It's only in two hour duration matches. If you play a full game, of course, the normal rules of bowls uh, take place. But um, on a two hour game, you're not allowed to visit the head. In fact, once, uh, once it's your turn, once the players swap over, you shouldn't also really stop halfway and have a chat about which bowl you're going to bowl. I'm afraid there just isn't time for that. Um, you can be directed which shot to, to, to play by your skip or by the person down the other end of the green, but you cannot visit ahead and you cannot go into great discussions about it in between the ends. You've got to get on with the game. Which means that indoors, um, usually games vary between 12 and 14 ends. It's rare to see many more than that really uh, being played in a, in a two hour match. Uh, club competitions, and there are still games that are played to the normal 21 ends, obviously the respots don't come into that, um, you just replay ends as normal. When I first uh, started this uh, clip, I, I explained that we're going to do some coaching with some new ladies, and in fact uh, after that uh, a game took place, and here we are to see the, uh, the game in progress, and lovely to see all six rinks being used, and uh, everybody enjoyed themselves. Okay, so that just about covers what I wanted to do today. The differences between the indoor and the outdoor game. I hope you've uh, found that useful. And uh, I'll see you again soon.